during the four years of your college. Along, of course, with strong backing and depth, in depth knowledge in your four areas of uh, engineering. Looking at the core area of engineering, which is information technology, computer science, it's also important to note that computer science, computers, information technology have become too much of buzzwords. Um, just by touching a computer, people assume that you'll become somebody terrific. You, know, you can uh, find this when you talk about uh, to elderly people in the family and say, Mama, why a computer panra? Okay. Which means he's studying some computer first, but computer panra means is something already huge uh, difference, apparently. However, unless we spend time understanding, I'm sorry, I forgot to switch off my own phone, I got it. Uh, can you please switch it off for me? Please cancel it off, sorry. Apologies. Um, so I was talking about understanding the core of whatever technology that you are doing, not just following buzzwords in the market. Buzzwords in the market come and go. Every three months, some company wants to sell something new, some buzzwords is introduced, and if you're going to chase buzzwords, the end of four years, you're going to chase the mirage, and what you have in your hands will be nothing but lots of buzzwords. So, please spend time going into the core of whatever material that you study. For instance, if you uh, want thorough understanding of operating systems in computer science, information technology, I would recommend Linux as a very strong starting point. How many of you use Linux here? Not very many, um, which is really unfortunate. Um, Linux offers you the ability to understand every small bit of what an operating system is. It gives you complete control. You can change things, you can build things, and that is one you learn really. Uh, just by using package tools, you know, Visual Basic, Visual C, Visual Java, all of them are tools which hide the internal details. The basic concepts are hidden from you. Uh, you as innovative technology students should not be hiding behind visual interfaces, GUIs. You should get down into the depth, start from assembly language, look at C programming directly, understand how data structures are built. So it's, it's, a, um, it's very important that using Linux and open source uh, be main part of your curriculum and your project. The advantage of open source was brought back to us in our personal effort when we decided five years ago to build this project called the Simputer. Um, in 1998, uh, the name Simputer, I coined the name Simputer to stand for Simple Computer. Uh, but then I realized it was too simple and uh, other people may claim that they have created that name earlier. So I made it a little complex and called it Simple, Inexpensive, Multilingual, People Computer. The goal was that unless we in India build our own hardware and software and solutions, the benefits of information technology are not going to go across the country. We'll only be importing technology, trying to learn how to use it well and support industry outside the country. We will not benefit the local economy, local industry, local population if you're only importing technology. Based on this, we said we have to build our own machine. And uh, it took us four, four and a half years of effort to, uh, we built a prototype in about two and a half years. And in 2001, we launched the prototype saying security prototypes are ready, let's start commercialization. At that time, we again took a decision that unless the creators jump in, stick their neck out, and say, I'm going to make it commercially successful, nobody else is going to come in and take the technology. So the Faculty and Institute, four of us, started a company to commercialize this, getting the approval of the Institute for the first time for faculty to become entrepreneurs. And we started a company which is called Picopita Computers, for which I am the CEO, to convert a prototype into a product. And believe me, it's a huge step. Um, building prototypes in a lab is very hard. When you are building it, you think that's the toughest problem anyone can face. Once you finish the prototype and take it to production, the hundred folds of difficulties. And here, there is again a distinct distinction between hardware and software. Most of us are 
in the comfort zone dealing with packaged software. Even unpackaged raw uh, assembly, most people have difficulty. But building hardware is immensely hard. And I believe most of the current generation of students are being moved away from hardware, which is unfortunate. Um, when you build a product, a printed circuit board, it's, if you make an error, it takes two weeks to correct that error. To give an example, in programming, you write a thousand line program, you miss a semicolon. Are you running to combine it with a missing semicolon? You recombine. But in hardware, you miss a wire in a printed circuit board. It will cost you two weeks and 30,000 rupees to get another board made. Okay? So if I were to tell you, limit compilation, running your compiler to once a week and charge you 10,000 rupees for each compilation, how many of you can create running programs? Simple working programs. You know, we are spoiled by the fact that we have these machines and institutions like these provide you 1,000 computers. So wherever you are, there is a computer where you can continuously recompile. But if I put a restriction and then you start thinking about how to create programs which work the first time, the quality of the program will eventually improve if I put that value on the number of files. Okay? So unless you build a product which is hardware software integration, you really do not understand core computing. Okay? Even if you succeed in integrating hardware and software, taking it into production, it's a huge job. You have to acquire components. There are minimum quantities. You have to build tools. Tooling is building plastic. That is, which will combine the hardware, fit it nicely with all the switches and buttons so that you can operate it comfortably. Building a tool is 10 times harder than building a hardware board. Because if I make a mistake in the tool, it will take me 2 months to correct and cost me 20 lakhs to correct. Okay? It's 10 times harder, 100 times harder. So we have gone through the last 3 years, from 2001 to March of this year, converting the CPU prototype into a product. And I'm happy to say that uh, we have the product in our pocket, which is the, uh, this is called the Amida Cicuta. Okay. Amida is our brand of Cicuta. And uh, what I have is, two of my colleagues will be here during the day to, for all of you to experience the product first hand. It will not be a formal demo on stage. I think it's in the discussion room upstairs. Uh, these people will be available for you to go find out what the computer is, how to use it, and what kind of uh, opportunities it affords for you in your course. So, this is a, I think, this is a handle computing or mobile computing platform. Uh, just like computers move from mainframes, minis, micros, PCs, laptops, the next generation is going to be computing everywhere, okay. be digital wherever, is the catchphrase for the next generation of computing. Which means you have to get rid of all your traditional understanding of what computers are going to be. They will be everywhere. Okay. Uh, wherever you need to compute, you should have the ability to compute. Uh, today, computers are in a lab. You have to go, be very respectful, remove your footwear outside, and then go in, you know, utter some mantras. You know, and then get access to computing. That's not how computing will be in the next generation. It should be as easy as writing on paper. Okay? And paper has not been improved upon for the last 3,000 years. That's still the best medium to capture your ideas, to share your ideas. And our goal in this project is to attempt to improve paper. Okay? Which means the one thing we have brought into this product is handwriting is central to our interface. You write on every screen in whatever language you choose. You are not bound by English or keyboards, which is what is keeping information technology away from 90% of our population. We want to break that barrier. And we believe we have taken the first step in breaking that barrier by bringing in user interface which depends on handwriting. I'll let you explain the product separately. But a few more words on what you, the very energetic students of this group of institutions, can do with this product is that we have complete control of the box, the hardware, the software, the manufacture, production, and support. 
Okay? I can drop this machine there. I won't drop it because the rest of the day I want it. Even if it breaks, I can repair it to you in another 24 hours. No other ID product here. You can give me the guarantee. Most of the handles in the market, if you break the display, the guy who sells you a sack, to buy a new one will cost you more than repairing it. Please throw it and buy this newest device in the stock of the market. That's how most information technology products are in this market today. We want to know, show that products should be used much longer than what the manufacturer decides it should be used for. But coming back, we have complete control of everything about this product, including the schematics, the design, the components, the software, the source code of the operating system, the applications, and all of this will be available for you to experiment, to evolve, to add, and to commercialize. That's the point that Mr. Chapman made uh, in his talk, that to be an entrepreneur is the critical difference that you can bring in when you complete your degree. If you are going to go looking for a job, you are one among 50,000. If you create your own company, you are hiring 50 other people, providing employment and your satisfaction that you have created some entity. It's, if we don't imagine these things, we don't think about these things, building an infrastructure of this complexity, the building you are sitting in, you must have taken so much energy and planning and resources and passion to make this happen. Right? We just sit here comfortably with you all. Every institution, to build the smallest of institutions, takes so much energy. And in putting that energy, you grow as a person. Okay? Not taking energy from others, but creating energy to share with others is how you grow as an individual. And I hope that this product gives you a small stepping stone towards fulfilling your own life's ambitions. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Find this talk, this great creation, Professor Dr. Swami Manukar, our beloved dedicated chairman, vice chairman, respected directors, Mr. Justin, the judges for this presentation, my dear faculty members, students, students the association office bearers, the students from participating colleges, very good morning to all of you. I am a very proud person today for multiple reasons. One is the management is very generous to conduct a series of symposium for 10 days. I think it never happened in the history of Vietnam. I don't think any other institution also have conducted such a series of events. I am really thankful to the management for giving this opportunity. The second, the enthusiasm the association is showing. Every day I am seeing the plus points. And I am seeing that students are coming here, watching the program and improving upon it. It's a great quality. I am very proud of my students. Second, regarding the chief guest, all of you know that we are sitting in the same bench and we are doing our engineering together in Government College of Technology, Bangalore. I remember the days Dr. Swami Mahavir used to take the steps in molding our classmates. In the year 1990, uh, 1982, our college election was conducted using electronic voting machine, which was designed under the leadership of Dr. Swami Manohar. That was the first election in India conducted using electronic voting machine. And the same year, you know that you are all having CNC machine in your CAD CAM lab. You know what was the project of Dr. Swami Manohar? I still know, but he made a prototype of CNC machine in the year 19. Uh, 82 and we got the best praise for the project. And not only that, in the hostel, we always used to surround with him actually. When we chose the topic, we do not know, rather than going to the professor, we go to uh, Professor Baruga. We used to call him Professor Baruga during our college days. It was so nice to, I used to see him only in BBC telecast and other telecast. I have seen him today only after a long time. The last time I have seen him only through BBC News. He was giving an interview about the CPU test. He is an international figure. <laughs> got a meeting in the evening in IEC. In, uh, in spite of his busy schedule, he accepted my invitation. He, could, he cannot tell me no for anything. So, Swami uh, Varagar, really thank you so much. And uh, you have created energy among our students. We want you to be there. And uh, my dear students, he is going to give you a lot of life projects and job for you. I guarantee you all of you. The initiative has been taken this morning. And uh, I assure you that we all have great teachers. Finally, I
say to all the students for taking so much of initiative and making this uh, symposium every day in a very interesting. I appreciate all of you and thank the manager and thanks for the opportunity.